Good day everyone. You're welcome to today's lesson. Today we'll be considering greed and its effect. Greed and its effect. Before we continue, let's define what greed is. Greed is an intense, excessive and selfish desire for something, especially wealth, power or food. Is an uncontrolled longing for increase in the acquisition or use of material gain or social value such as status or power. Take note of these words that greed is something that is intense, so excessive and very selfish. And look at it, it's also a longing that is uncontrollable. You cannot control the longing. These words will reflect in our lesson today. Each one of us has a desire. Young, old, teachers, students, parents, children. We all have our desires. How good or bad your desire is will depend on what inspires your desire whether God or Satan and remember our desires can either bring us blessings or curses now look at our first case which is Ahab's greed and its consequences in 1 Kings 21 1 to 29 Naboth was a Jezreelite he had a vineyard close to the palace of Ahab who was the king of Israel and what happened Ahab took interest in Naboth's vineyard and desired to have the vineyard to himself to convert it to a vegetable garden in exchange for money or something better but look at what Naboth did Naboth turned down the request pointing out that it was his father's inheritance therefore he could not give the vineyard in exchange for anything without money or any fortune Naboth was not ready for that and what happened Ahab went home sad and couldn't eat and wife took note of it she noticed it and she asked him and he narrated the story and she promised him to come down and eat she was going to get the place for him wow so what did she do now she wrote a letter to the elders and nobles to proclaim a fast and set two people to accuse Naboth of cursing God and the king and they were to immediately kill him by stoning and you know what they did they did exactly what the letter stipulated and they killed Naboth after killing Naboth she now directed her husband to take over the vineyard and Naboth took over the vineyard indeed but look at it no sin goes unpunished there is consequence for every act of sin except one repents look at the consequences of Ahab's greed first on reaching the vineyard to claim Naboth's vineyard lo and behold the prophet of God met with him Elijah was sent to rebuke him listen to what Elijah told him dogs will lick the blood of Ahab in the place where they licked the blood of Naboth in Preston just as dogs licked the blood of Naboth God said dogs will surely lick the blood of Ahab on the same spot on the same parcel of land where Naboth died and see what he said he said for Jezebel his wife definitely dogs 
will also eat her flesh, lick her blood within the bounds of Jezreel. His family didn't go unpunished. The dogs will eat any member of Ahab's family who died in the city. And for those who will die in the field, birds will eat their flesh. So pathetic. That's the consequence of greed. On hearing those words, you know what happened? Ahab tore his clothes and he, he cried out, put on sackcloth as a show of repentance. And God now spoke. He postponed the punishment to the days of his sons and not in Ahab's lifetime. That's the benefit of repentance. God averted the punishment and delayed the punishment because Ahab repented. But remember, we have not read in the scripture where Jezebel repented. So we could only see God postponing the punishment of Ahab, not Jezebel. Let's look at the second case study, which is Gehazi. Gehazi's greed and its consequences. Gehazi was Elisha's servant. He served his master, Elisha. Now, Naaman was the great commander of the Syrian army. Unfortunately, Naaman was a leper. And he was so loved by the Syrian king. Why? Because he led Syria in wars that defeated many nations, including Israel. During one of their encounters with Israel, they captured a girl who became a slave and a servant to the wife of Naaman. And one day, the slave girl informed her mistress of the ability of Elisha in Israel, and she had wished if her master was in Israel, would have been healed by Prophet Elisha. And the wife narrated the ordeal to her husband. And her husband went ahead and discussed with the king. And the king now wrote a letter and gave it to Naaman to take it to Israel and give it to the king of Israel, directing him to be of help to Naaman. On reaching Israel, he handed over the letter to the king. The king was so troubled and very angry and aggressive. He thought to himself that the Syrian king was just making an attempt to look for his trouble, to create chaos between them so that they would go into war. And lo and behold, the prophet of God, Elisha, hate about it. And he sent a word to the king, directing him to send Naaman to his house. And the king did just that. On reaching Elisha's house, Elisha sent a message to Naaman, telling him to go to River Jordan and dip himself seven times. See what Naaman did? Naaman was displeased that Elisha treated him with disdain. He said he left superior rivers in Syria, like Abana and Fapa. He left in anger. Remember, it's not how clean or big or nice the rivers are, but because the servant of God had spoken. He was advised by his servants to comply with the prophet's directive, and he did went and dipped himself seven times in Jordan River and was healed of leprosy. As a way of appreciation, he offered gift of ten talents of silver, six hundred shekels of gold, and ten festal garments. But Elisha turned down the gifts. 
Elisha, who was standing by the side of the prophet of God, was angry and not happy with the decision of the prophet. So he went after Naaman and lied that just when Naaman left the presence of the prophet, two sons of the prophet came from Ephraim and the prophet sent him to Naaman to collect a gift to collect a talent of silver and two festal garments but you know what Naaman did he was so happy and excited so he gave him two talents of silver and he gave him two festal garments when he came with those gifts he hid them in the house far away from where Elisha was thinking Elisha wouldn't know then Elisha summoned him and asked him where are you coming from he argued and insisted that he didn't go anywhere the servant of God rebuked him and told him my spirit was with you when you ran after Naaman to collect those gifts since you insisted on doing that you will not only collect those gifts from him but you will also collect leprosy wow the consequence of greed and interestingly the bible says Gehazi and his descendants were cursed with leprosy can you imagine people that were not there to see what Gehazi did but because they were connected and from his lineage they received the curse of leprosy instantly he left the presence of Elisha white as snow Let's look at some significant points and lessons that we can learn from this. Greed is a social evil that attracts negative consequences. You could see the consequences on Ahab and his family, on Gehazi and his descendants. And the consequences of greed will not only affect you, the offender, but it will also affect the innocent no act of sin can escape the notice of god no matter how it is concealed before man you cannot hide it from god here is an assignment for you please i want you to answer these questions and send to the contact below hope to see you soon